Hello everyone, welcome to the last clip. We're going to look at objections five and six to the resurrection and give a response. The fifth objection to the resurrection goes like this. The gospel writers and the New Testament writers invented the resurrection. Well, that's false. Uh, the Gospel writers and the New Testament writers were writing accounts of the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, its reality and its meaning. Some of the Gospels and much of the New Testament were written within living memory of the resurrection. People who were alive, who witnessed the risen Lord. And the Gospels and the New Testament letters were immediately accepted within the Christian communities. If there'd been something amiss, something false, they would have been rejected out of hand. In addition, the Gospels seem at times slightly contradictory when it comes to accounts of the resurrection. There is something very much strange about the accounts we have. And those first Christians were not unaware of this. If they had wanted to make sure people were convinced of the resurrection... They could have made sure all the accounts coincided, all fit together, without any contradictions. They understood that the resurrection was a different type of event. And they certainly would not have invented the idea of a crucified Messiah in the first place. This, after all, was a stumbling block to their preaching of the gospel. We also see other signs of authenticity. Remember how Jesus first appears to the women at the tomb and to Mary Magdalene. Now women were not thought to be credible witnesses in the first century and their witness would not stand up in a court of law. If someone was to write a story to convince others about resurrection, then they would not put women as the first witnesses to the resurrection. The gospel writers didn't invent the resurrection as the church was already alive and it was growing before the New Testament writer, writings and gospels were ever written and it was a church growing in spite of persecution. After the devastation of Good Friday and the crucifixion of Jesus, his bodily resurrection is the only and best explanation of why the church got going in the first place and why it grew so quickly. Objection number six goes like this. Well, when the disciples were speaking about the resurrection of Jesus, they were doing so in a poetical and metaphorical way. Like the spirit of Jesus is alive and we can feel his presence with us. Well, it's a nice idea. We might even speak of our, our loved lost ones in the same way. We might say their spirit's with us. We can feel their presence. But when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus, that doesn't add up. The Christians were not speaking of Jesus in a poetic or metaphorical way. They went out onto the streets to proclaim that Jesus who died on the cross has been raised up. They ate with Jesus. They spoke with Jesus. They touched his wounds. And they were truly convinced of this. St. Paul in chapter 17 of the Acts of the Apostles goes to Athens and the Oreopagus. And there he preaches on the resurrection. And often some laugh at him. But Paul didn't say, no, no, I'm speaking poetically. I'm speaking metaphorically. Paul had the great chance to say that but he insisted on the reality of the bodily resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Even more, if Jesus didn't rise, he said, then we're still in our sins. I might add to that the evidence of billions of Christians down the ages who have testified to the power of the risen Jesus in their lives until this day. Now all these defences of the resurrection of Jesus don't necessarily add up to proof of the resurrection. 
They won't necessarily convince someone to accept and embrace Jesus as Lord. Although many people, including lawyers, want to weigh up the evidence, have become Christians based on the evidence. Faith is more than that. Faith is a grace from God and it's a leap. But faith is not a leap in the dark. Faith is a leap in the light and it's based on evidence. So thanks for joining us for this short course. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus, the Christ, your Son. He died on the cross for us, but death could not hold him. In his resurrection, he gives us new hope and a new purpose. Give us this new life of the resurrection and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We place ourselves in your hands. And we ask this through the same Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.